The Democratic Party is already facing an uphill battle when it comes to 2022 because they haven't actually used this limited window of time to deliver transformational change to Americans. So it's already going to be very difficult to motivate people to get out and vote for them. And on top of that, there's also this. The New York Times reports Republicans gain heavy House edge in 2022 as gerrymandered maps emerge. On a highly distorted congressional map that is still taking shape, the party has added enough safe House districts to capture control of the chamber based on its redistricting alone. So just based on their performance and Joe Biden's approval ratings alone, it would be very difficult for them to retain control of the House. But when you factor in gerrymandering, it's going to be a bloodbath in 2022. Now, the New York Times further explains a year before the polls open in the 2022 midterm elections, Republicans are already poised to flip at least five seats in the closely divided House thanks to redrawn district maps that are more distorted, more disjointed and more gerrymandered than any since the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. The rapidly forming congressional map, a quarter of which has taken shape as districts are redrawn this year, represents an even more extreme warping of American political architecture, with state legislators in many places moving aggressively to cement their partisan dominance. The flood of gerrymandering carried out by both parties, but predominantly by Republicans, is likely to leave the country ever more divided by further eroding competitive elections and making representatives more beholden to their party's base. Yeah, great. So now the question is, what do we do? I mean, if we have to redraw district lines every 10 years to better represent these precincts as populations change, what's the alternative to this? Well, aside from just getting rid of our current electoral system altogether, which we should do, by the way, uh, an alternative is to have independent, impartial, nonpartisan organizations redraw these district lines. So that way, they're not trying to score up wins for either of the two parties. They're just drawing them so that way each precinct is best represented. Now, there's a provision in the For the People Act, which Democrats did not pass. It was introduced in both the House and the Senate, but it was not passed. But in the For the People Act, there was a provision that would do just that. It would outsource the role of redrawing districts every 10 years to independent commissions. But because that didn't pass and because it's unlikely to pass and these districts are already redrawn, it's going to further skew the entire Congress towards Republicans. So they even have more of an advantage. Now we talk about gerrymandering quite a bit, and I'm sure that all of my viewers know what gerrymandering is, but I think it's worth sharing this image again, that really represents how egregious the act of gerrymandering is because this is undemocratic. So as you can see, if you have 50 precincts, 60% blue and 40% red, and you need to create five districts out of these 50 precincts. And in theory, if you draw these districts impartially, it should look like this. But if you get creative in the way you draw these districts, you can turn a disadvantage into an advantage, even if there are less red precincts than blue precincts in these five districts. And it could look like this. So in theory, the party that has the highest percentage of votes should see a relatively proportional amount of seats in Congress. I mean, we don't have a proportionally representative system, but just it should maybe loosely resemble that. But that's not the case thanks to gerrymandering. If it weren't for gerrymandering, Republicans would struggle to retain control of Congress because there's just overall more people in this country who aren't Republicans. That's that's just the fact. But they continue to give themselves an edge by tweaking our electoral system and making it advantage them. Now, we don't even have to go to that like example of gerrymandering because there's a couple of districts that I want to highlight that show you how fucked up these districts look after they've been gerrymandered into oblivion. So this is the second congressional district of Texas. This is Dan Crenshaw's district. And as you can see, I mean, it looks incredibly fucked up thanks to gerrymandering. It's almost a spiral of sorts. And you can take the shape of this and actually make it into an eye patch of sorts. That's how bizarre it looks. Now, this one here is the 35th Congressional District of Texas. This is Republican Lloyd Doggett's district. And it looks vaguely like the rifle spear in Bloodborne, if you ask me. Now, uh, let's go on over to the 4th Congressional District of Illinois. This is represented by Chewy Garcia, a Democrat. And this district is somehow even more fucked up than the last two districts that we saw. I mean, you have two cities divided. And it, it doesn't make sense. It's connected by a highway, basically. Now, you have some more examples here. This is Ohio's 11th congressional district, Texas 33, 
Illinois 7. But I mean, this is all subject to change, assuming that these districts are going to uh, be redrawn as well. Uh, the difference now is that we should expect them to look even more ridiculous than they do now. So, I mean, this is just, it's, it's awful, right? This is a further uh, eroding of our democracy, where less and less people have a say because of partisan gerrymandering. Partisan actors shouldn't be able to carve out districts for themselves so they can have safe seats. That's just not the way that a healthy society and democracy should function. But here in the United States, we do everything ass backwards. So of course, even when it comes to democracy, when we're supposedly the oldest democracy on the planet, we have fucked up things like this happening regularly. And it's not even that controversial. Not many people are even talking about it when there should be an outrage. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.